In this video, I am going to show you how to make a bell curve in Google Sheets. A bell curve, also called normal distribution, is a type of distribution for a variable that is commonly used in statistics and for analyzing financial data. It is a type of distribution that occurs naturally in many situations where the graph is a symmetrical bell-shaped curve, which is why it's called a bell curve. So this is an example of a bell curve. So the highest point on this bell curve shows the mean, mode, and median of the data, which is where most of the data points tend to cluster around here. And then the width of the curve shows the standard deviation around the mean. So this is what I'm going to show you how to make in this video. Now, in order to create this, there's a few different columns that we need to calculate. So I start with this data here where I have the test scores for various students on a test and then I have to calculate each of these columns and then we end up creating the actual graph with this data here which we use this for. So this is what I'm going to show you how to do next. So first what you want to do is you have your original data and then you create all of the columns that we're going to end up calculating. So you're going to want a column for average, standard deviation, standard deviation minus 3, standard deviation plus 3, sequence, and distribution. So those are all the things we're going to be calculating next. So the first thing we're going to calculate is the average. This one is pretty simple because we're just using the average function. So equals average and then I'm just going to put in my data range here and this is the average for this data. So next we're going to use standard deviation or calculate the standard deviation. So there's actually a few different formulas that you can use. One that you can use is standard deviation dot p and what this does is it calculates the standard deviation of an entire population. And so what this means is sometimes your data here that you have is going to be the entire data set. Other times this data that you have is just a sample of the data and we're calculating the standard de deviation from a random sample of the data. So there's a few different formulas you can use depending on whether you have the entire population or a sample of the data. So if you're doing entire population, you can do standard deviation dot P. If you're doing a sample of the data, standard deviation dot S. So in this example, I have all of the test scores here. So I'll just do dot P. So equals STDEV dot P. And then I'm going to put in this same data range that has my test scores and this is my standard deviation for the data set. Now the next column that we're going to be calculating is the standard deviation plus 3 and minus 3 columns and not actual plus 3 minus 3 this is an abbreviation where we're actually calculating in this column is the average minus three times the standard deviation. So I just didn't want to write all of that out because there's not a lot of room. Um, so it's the average minus the standard deviation times three. So equals average minus the standard deviation. I'm just going to put this in parentheses so we can clearly see. and that is our number and then we'll do the same thing but this is the average minus the standard deviation or sorry excuse me average plus the standard deviation times three so equals average plus standard deviation times three and I'll just put that in parentheses to make it clear and so that is the values for those two columns now the next thing that we need to calculate is the sequence. 
And what this is, it's just basically the entire sequence of numbers used for the test scores. And to do this, we are going to use the sequence function. So what we're going to do equals sequence. And so I'm going to take first the standard deviation plus three column and then minus standard deviation minus three column and then we're going to do plus one. So the standard deviation plus three column minus the standard deviation minus three column plus one. That's my first argument of the function. And then one is going to be your second argument of the function. And then lastly, it is going to be the standard deviation minus three column again as the last argument of the function and then enter. And this will be my entire sequence that we're going to use for the bell curve. And now the last column that we need to calculate is the distribution. And to calculate this, we are going to use the normal distribution function along with array formula. Now, this formula and the last one are a little bit more complex than these other ones. These ones are a lot more simple, so it's easier to follow along with in a video. If you're struggling getting this formula or this next one, just click the link that I will place in the description of this video where you can go to my website and there will be the exact formula that you could basically just copy and paste if you want to into your own spreadsheet. Um, sometimes it's hard to follow along in a video and get that exact formula. So if you want to click that link and get that formula, you can do it that way too. But anyways, yeah, so we're going to use the array formula and the normal distribution function. And so what we're going to do is equals array formula and then inside this we will do our normal distribution function and then the first thing that we need to do is put in our sequence range and so this is g2 to g looks like 22 is where that ends comma and so my next argument of the function is going to be the average and we want to take the absolute cell value so i'm going to lock this by hitting f4 so that you have your two dollar signs here and then i'm going to place another comma and then the next argument of the function is going to be our standard deviation and i'll hit f4 again so that we lock this in place and then another comma and then false and then I'll add my two closing parentheses, and this is the distribution. Now we have all of our cal columns calculated. We're ready to actually make the bell curve from here. It's a pretty simple process. We're going to highlight the sequence and distribution columns. And so I have this highlighted, and then we can either press the insert chart button here or insert chart and then when your chart editor shows up on the right hand side, what I'm going to do under the setup tab is go to this chart type section and we're just gonna change this. If you come down to the line section, what we want is a smooth line chart and there you have your bell curve. So a couple things that you can pay attention to once your bell curve is actually plotted, a narrow and tall curve tends to show that there's a low standard deviation, which means the data is not spread out as far. A wider, shorter curve tends to mean a st larger standard deviation, which means the data points are a little more spread out from the average. Um, I'm not gonna cover reading a bell curve too much in this video. This was mostly just how to make one. If you want to read more about bell curves and reading them and what they mean, uh, there's a lot of other great resources online, but that's not what this video is about. But now we have our, our bell curve. Uh, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments.
Thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or content suggestions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer everyone.